I'd like to buy a W, please. Oh, it's it's not a vowel? Has to be a vowel. What? Well, what, what about a two-out hit? Can I... Still no? Not... Hmm. Don't mind me, just preparing for the impending falling sky. Hey guys, I'm Dara Wellman and this is Bird Seeds, the show where I talk about the best team in baseball even when they don't play like it. Let me just put this away. The Cardinals need just 13 wins in their last 25 regular season contests to reach 100 victories in 2015. And yet the NL Central is far from locked up. The Birds did little to help their cause with the Pirates in town last week, dropping two of three in less than stellar fashion. And surprisingly, annoyingly, the pitching problems carried over into the Cubs series as well. According to Cardinals beat reporter Jennifer Langosh, the Cardinals pitching staff allowed their opponents to score five or more runs in just 33 of their first 129 games. This week, they've surrendered five plus in six of the last eight. Trouble in paradise? The starting rotation has been the best in baseball all year, but all year we've also been hearing about saving innings for guys like Carlos Martinez and Michael Walker. Well, that has finally started to happen, and the results? Not so great, at least thus far. Martinez was roughed up pitching against the Pirates on extra rest, and Lance Lynn, who was also skipped once through the rotation, only lasted two and a third innings after his own extended rest. Are these two things directly related? I don't know. Lance Lynn sure seemed to think so, and there's something to the fact that these guys get into a routine and a rhythm just like hitters do. But there's also something to the fact that every now and then they just have a bad day. Or a few. In a row. Maybe they should just not all have a bad day in the same week. Hmm? Also, a little good mojo couldn't hurt, right? I mean, it's only crazy if it doesn't work. So we haven't seen the Carlos Martinez cup tower in a few days. At least I haven't seen it. I know that it was kind of silly and a lot of people started to get irritated with it, but come on, it was fun and it was entertaining and who knows, maybe it was just the kind of good mojo this team needed. But seriously, the cup tower was pretty funny. I didn't get a chance to talk about it in the last episode and my friend Kelly sent me these great pictures of Carlos and the cup tower from the time she was in St. Louis last. And you know, this is just a silly little thing that Carlos was doing, but I think it showed, yes, some of his youth, but also some of the energy that he brings to the dugout. Everybody got a kick out of it and I don't know, they might have gotten tired of it and maybe that's why we haven't seen much more of it, but Guys, if it works, it's not that crazy. Just saying. But you know, whether the pitchers give up one run or 12, the Cardinals can't win games without scoring. Revolutionary, I know. In theory, guys getting healthy should help with some of that scoring. In theory. Speaking of, it's time for this week's Injury Update. First, the bad news. Jordan Walden, the other piece in the Jason Hayward deal, done for the year and maybe more. The organization kind of compared it to the Mark Mulder injury that kept him from ever coming back to St. Louis. Not a good thing to be compared to. Also interesting, John Mazalek said they really didn't know much about the physical status of Jordan Walden prior to the trade, but they did know that there were some concerns prior to signing the extension with Walden. Interesting to hear that now and know that there were already these concerns, but that the Cardinals really had big plans for Walden in the back end of the bullpen this year. I think it's easy to overlook that loss because we didn't see a whole lot of him this season. But it's also interesting to think of how much stronger an already strong bullpen 
could have been with Jordan Walden at the back end. This week brought on the returns of John Jay and Randall Gritchick. Sort of. Gritchick's return to this point is almost laughable. Scratch that. I totally laughed. A lot. When I read about the limits on his return. He's back, but he can only pinch run. I mean, since we're not playing high school softball, a courtesy runner isn't really a thing. So... Good news is, with expanded rosters, this kind of thing might be weird, but it's fine. And Gritchick is hoping to be cleared to pick up a bat and maybe even pinch hit by this weekend. Getting him back and the pop that comes with his bat will be huge down the stretch, but he may have to compete for playing time with a guy who may actually be the most polarizing Cardinal of all time. Yes. John Jay. The John Jay who was out most of the year and then the biggest complaint, literally the second the lineup was posted with him on it. <laughs> okay, listen. If Gritchick is healthy, he needs to be the starting center fielder. You hear, Mike? But John Jay is going to play. It's going to happen, like it or not. And truthfully, getting him back big league ready so that he can be available off the bench on a potential postseason roster that's important too. Look at the Cardinals bench this year. It needs all the help it can get. I've said it before and I'll say it again. If the Cardinals' fate lies in the playing time of John Jay, then they have bigger problems. Also of note, the near returns of the Matt Attack. Matt Belial threw a simulated outing and hopes to return soon whatever that means. And both Matt Holiday and Matt Adams are still slated to return later this month, though no exact dates are being given yet. Not rushing these comebacks is key, as we saw with Matt Holiday earlier this year. And the players know that too. I was impressed with what Matt Belial had to say about this very thing earlier this week. He said, I have to make sure that when I'm coming back, they're getting me and not someone who's just trying to fill in, but someone who has his stuff and his command. You gotta love hearing that, because this is a bullpen that, with some exceptions, has been pretty solid all year, so if you're gonna come back and disrupt what's already been going pretty well, you better be better than what's already there. Which is conveniently a perfect segue to this week's Twitter question. Corey Rudd asks, if Wayno really is available, should he be on the postseason roster, and in what role if so? This is tricky for me. I keep making a very distinct difference between healthy and ready, because even if Wayne's Achilles is good to go and his arm is strong, I mean, it's clearly fresh, is he gonna be better than any of the other choices that are already there? I don't see a scenario where he's in the rotation, because he's not gonna be stretched out and ready for that. I mean, this is gonna be like spring training Adam Wainwright, and while spring training Wayno is probably better than like mid-season a lot of people, he's just not gonna be stretched out and ready for that responsibility. But out of the pen is an interesting option. I mean, he does have some history of success out of the pen in the playoffs, but you know, that doesn't really mean anything at this point in his career. It's an interesting option though, but unless he comes back in time to get a handful of games in before the playoffs, I don't think there's any way you bump a guy from the bullpen in favor of Wayno as a bit of a wild card. I mean, are you gonna bump Martinez or Villanueva or Ciszek or Broxton? I guess you could make an argument for one of the last two, but you don't know what you've got in Wainwright other than what his history has been. Listen, I'm a Wainwright girl. He's been my favorite Cardinal for a long time, but even I have a hard time believing he'll be ready enough to take someone else's spot. Surprise me, Wayno. Do it. It'll be a great story. But now I want to turn the tables on you. Do you think Adam Wainwright deserves a spot on the playoff roster? And instead of whom? You decide and let me know what you think. No matter what Adam Wainwright does, his teammates still have some work to do. The entirety of the remaining September schedule is all NL Central all the time. After surviving the Pirates and the Cubs, the Cardinals get the Reds and the Brewers for a turn or two before meeting back up with those wildcard teams later this month. As of today, the magic number is 21, and every day that number inches closer to zero is a good day. Happy September baseball, everybody. See you next time on Bird Seeds. <laughs>